Google adds more security to Android devices, sign-in kiosks are vulnerable to all sorts of hacks, and Facebook uses 2FA numbers for search. All that coming up now on ThreatWire. Greetings, I am Shannon Morse, and this is ThreatWire for March 5th, 2019, your summary of the threats to our security, privacy, and internet freedom. Real quick, I would like to give a special shout out to my newest Patreon supporters this week, including Jeffrey and Yama Industrials, Inc. I would also like to say thank you to everyone who signed up on Patreon last month. Because of you, we were able to donate a total of $130 to WISP, which is Women in Security and Privacy. So since that campaign got so much love, I would would like to do it again. So what InfoSec or hacker charity would you like to see ThreatWire support? Let me know down in those comments below. And if you are interested in supporting ThreatWire, hit up patreon.com slash ThreatWire. And now it's time for the news. First off, let's give a hand to Google. I don't say that in every single episode, but congratulations, Google. The Google Application Security Improvement Program was first introduced five years ago, and as of Thursday, the app has helped fix the security in more than one million apps in the Google Play Store. Now, more than 300,000 developers have received help with apps, and according to Google's post, last year, 30,000 developers fixed over 75,000 apps thanks to the program in just that one year. None of the apps reached the Play Store for user download until they passed the security program tests. About 55% of apps were rejected of the total submitted for 2018. Now to continue with Android security, Google's newest update to the Android operating system for 7.0 Nougat and above makes devices FIDO2 certified. That's F-I-D-O-2 certified. This means that you can officially use your fingerprint sensor on your Android device to sign into other applications or websites that also support FIDO2 protocols without the need for a password or an additional PIN. FIDO2 stands for Fast Identity Online, and it uses public key cryptography with a phone, a physical token, keys, or biometrics like a fingerprint scanner. Now, you may have already used this kind of authentication in apps, but this rollout includes mobile browsers as well. Web devs simply have to add a special API call to their backend to roll out the update on their own servers. FIDO2 does not replace two-factor authentication. That's a very important part. It simply replaces the username and that password part of the login prompt. If an app dev or a website admin still wants to supply users with additional security of requiring a PIN or additional biometrics, they absolutely can. Now, since passwords are the bane of every network admin's existence and are commonly the first piece of data used for attacks, FIDO2 is an absolute upgrade because it offers better privacy and more convenience than typing in credentials. But what do you think? Should this be adopted in more devices? Leave a comment below and let me know. IBM's cybersecurity team, which is called X-Force Red, recently published details of an investigation they did into five visitor management systems. Visitor management systems are supposed to replace security guards or reception desks, or add to them, to speed up the process of allowing people access to a building by using IoT. Since these systems are connected, though, that also means they are susceptible to being hacked. X-Force Red, and most notably two of their interns named Hannah Robbins and Scott Brink, found 19 total zero-day vulnerabilities in five different devices that they studied, which are offered by different companies. The products are called the Jolly Technologies Lobby Track Desktop, the HID Global's Easy Lobby Solo, Threshold Security's eVisitor Pass, Envoy's Envoy Passport, and The Receptionist. Just to list off a few of the security vulnerabilities that they found, these included information disclosure vulnerabilities, default admin credentials, privilege escalation bugs, and data leakage of info on visitors like their driver license numbers, their social security numbers, and their full names. Aside from stealing data, an attacker could also use these devices to gain access to a building along with social engineering. They could do recon on reoccurring visitors. They could print fake badges or commit identity theft. And while you may run across one that is not connected from time to time, these also pose a risk as they are physically accessible by visitors and could be used as a pivot point for a network. 
Of all of them, Lobby Track had the most issues, with seven total CVEs. The receptionist had the least, with only one, and all of these were disclosed and CVEs are issued before the research was posted publicly. Each of the vendors is or has already issued patches, and in the future, vendors should consider these techniques and strengthen their admin credentials, encrypt data, and harden access to the device by not connecting them to a network or isolating them from other devices. Back in April of 2018, Facebook announced that it would no longer allow users to search for friends via their phone numbers, removing that ability along with a series of other changes to overhaul user privacy. Now it appears that they are using the phone number that you use for two-factor authentication as a way for you to be searchable as well by associating it with your user profile, and there is no opt-out for this currently available. Now, I should make it clear that this is not a new policy for Facebook. Last year as well, researchers discovered that if you use a phone number for 2FA, advertisers could use that same phone number to target you with ads. Because of all of this, in May, Facebook started allowing users to use app-based two-factor authentication instead, which is great, though removing your phone number still took quite a few steps to actually navigate through their settings. Users are now discovering this due to a tweet thread posted by Jeremy Burge, who pointed out that your only options when changing the setting titled who can look you up using the phone number you provided are friends, friends of friends, or everyone. There is no way to remove the phone number from being searchable at all. This shows that even if you remove your phone number from 2FA and switch to app-based or a token, that Facebook keeps your phone number stored and searchable. Facebook has not responded to media with comment as of recording and no update is in sight. Now, since a phone number is being used so often across multiple platforms as a part of your identity, especially by banks and other highly vulnerable platforms like your mobile carrier, Facebook should not be using a two-factor authentication phone number as a profile number as well, or at least allow it to be opt-out. This data should be segmented for privacy, not combined for advertisers. Thank you so much to my Patreon supporters. If you are interested in getting access to a slew of extras and a ton of perks, even if it's just one or two bucks a month, hit that button to become a Patreon supporter because it all helps. And it shows me that you appreciate the work that I'm putting in for this show each and every week. Also a big thanks to our Hush Puppy Perk level patrons for sending in their fur baby photos. We have a couple of new ones this week. I love them, so keep them coming. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And with that, I'm Shannon Morse and I will see you on the internet.